Hello, hi, and welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm Blue and I'm a business astrologer and strategist here to help you bring astrology into your business strategy so that you can start, grow, and scale your business. So if you are familiar with my podcast, Strategic Magic, then you already know every single month I do an episode about the upcoming astrological season. And recently I dropped the episode for Airy Season 2024 and how you can use it as a business owner. But I wanted to do this video because sometimes you just need to visually see what's going on in the sky in order to really use it. So today's episode is going to be all about the major transits of Aries season 2024. We're going to be looking at the actual chart of each of the major transits that I mentioned. And I'm going to be translating the cosmic energy for you so that you know exactly how you can use it to its advantage. So if you want to know what Aries season has in store for you, then keep watching. All right. So the very first major transit we're going to be talking about today is March 19th, when the sun officially moves into Aries. So this is going to occur at 11.07 PM Eastern Standard Time. So feel free to adjust that to your time zone, whatever time zone that you're in. And there's a few major things within this chart that I want to talk about. First of all, the sun is going to be trining the moon. So what does this mean? First of all, the sun and the moon, they hold a special significance amongst all of the planets. So they are often referred to as the luminaries, meaning that out of all of the planets, the sun and the moon, they kind of hold their own, right? They are the only planets that rule over one sign each. So the sun is the only planet that rules over Leo and the moon is the only sign that rules over Cancer. So they have a special significance amongst all of the other planets. And when there are positive aspects that are happening or like a positive relationship that's happening between the two planets, this is really encouraging for us. So on March 19th, the sun is going to be trining the moon. So there's going to be like a harmonious relationship that's happening between them. They're going to be communicating very positively. And I really like this, especially because we also have the sun and the moon in the same element. When we have signs that are in the same element, in this case being fire, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius all being fire signs, like The way that they communicate with each other is very positive because they understand each other. Their temperament is very similar. And so they're able to just like communicate. So in terms of translating that for your own life, your own business, right? This is a really, or this can be a really encouraging time for you to connect the vitality, the like motivation that you have to like push forward with things and bridge that with your inner desires. So the sun is like the vitality of the energy levels of what it is that we want to do, right? The sun has been like feeling very depleted and like dragged on because of Pisces season. The sun doesn't love being in water signs. It actually does its best when it's when it's in fire signs, especially when it's in Leo being rule, being the sign or being the planet that rules Leo, right? So the sun is gaining vitality by moving into Aries season. It's gaining its momentum back. And then this Leo moon is also supporting this energy increase as well. So another thing that I want to point out with this chart is that we also have Mercury conjunct the North Node. So Mercury retrograde is going to be happening during Aries season. We're going to be talking about that a bit later in this video. But with Mercury conjunct the North Node, okay, in the sign of Aries, there's going to be this increased pressure on communicating and sharing ideas, but to also do so in a way that naturally goes against how Mercury likes to express itself. So Mercury being the planet that rules over communication, it actually 
enjoys being in signs where it can have a little more space to think about what it's going to say before it say it, right? Naturally, Mercury rules over um, Gemini and Virgo. And so with it being in Aries, there's almost a tendency when it's in a fire sign to express itself first, ask questions later, okay? And I see this conjunction with the North Node emphasizing this energy of like, I'm going to express myself, I'm going to share my ideas, and probably not see the idea all the way through for better or for worse, right? So this can be really encouraging if there's something that you've been wanting to do or feeling pulled to do, but haven't necessarily had the, like, the passion, the wherewithal, or even like the support to push forward with it, especially with that North Node conjunction, right? The North Node is expansion energy. So there's an encouragement here to like really lean into like, what are you passionate about? What is like really on your heart to say? But just like also be aware of like the human condition, right? That you're going to be communicating with other people who have their thoughts, their own feelings, their own like ways of communicating. And so there may be a little bit of friction. There may be some buttons push there. If you go too far into, I'm just going to express myself by any means necessary. And I think especially with that sun, trine, moon energy, encouraging this, right? It's really going to pay off in the long run if you just, you know, give yourself a little bit more space to think before you share things or to just be mindful of how you're sharing things, all right? We also have Saturn conjunct Venus. Um, So this is really interesting. So Venus, the planet of love, beauty, attraction, magnetism, right? It actually really loves being in Pisces. Venus naturally rules over Taurus and Libra, but it loves being in Pisces, right? And so we have this energy that is like contracting contradicting itself a little bit, right? So Venus loves being in Pisces, but it also really doesn't like being in Saturn because Pisces is a sign that really enjoys and works best when it has space to move how it just wants to move. Saturn is a naturally restricting planet, right? It is the planet of restriction, of consequences, of karma. And so we have these conflicting energies of like Venus encourages that free flowing energy that Pisces naturally wants to move in. But Saturn also brings in an energy of restriction, but also just considering what are the effects of how I move or how I have been moving to other people? How, what are the consequences of that building upon itself and building over time, right? So this conjunction is a meeting of these two energies in conflict with each other almost. It doesn't have to be that serious, but, (laughs) you know, you're going to be naturally feeling in a crossroads of like, you want to move free flowing. You want to move in a way that is uninhibited and unrestricted, but that restriction is naturally there. So in order to work with that, right? it may be helpful to ask yourself, like, what are the ways that I can work with restriction? How is the restriction or the conflict that I'm having, what is it trying to teach me? Okay, what is what am I here to learn from that energy? And then we also have Saturn sextile Jupiter. Um, this is also rounding out to be really positive energy because, again, Jupiter is also a benefic planet. It wants to encourage us to bless us in different ways, right? And with it being sextile Saturn, there's going to be positive communication between the two planets. And so overall, what we can really learn and take away from this aspect in particular is that there's, again, this expansion energy around where we are feeling constrained, right? Maybe perhaps finding a new way to communicate, a new way to express freedom, to redefine what passion looks like, and ultimately to use the growing vitality of, again, the sun moving into a sign that it enjoys and works favorably in, like, 
that can be really positive encouragement to help us work with some of the more conflicting energies, especially with that Mercury conjunct the North Node and Saturn conjunct Venus. Um, Ultimately, like this is going to be really interesting energy for sure, really shifting energy and possibly around the time where the sun is moving directly into Aries. There's a sense of both like restriction and relief that's happening between especially the ways that we're communicating, the ways that we are feeling like restricted and like bound against like how we want to express ourselves, but then also how we're calling in opportunities, how we are allowing things to come to us. Okay, so next we have the lunar eclipse in Libra that's happening on March 25th. So this is going direct at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and this is really special. So what's happening here is that there is a full moon in Libra, but it's being amplified because the full moon is actually a lunar eclipse is happening. So the star of the show here is really the sun moon opposition that's happening. Whenever there's a full moon, that means that the sun and the moon are in opposite signs from each other. In this case, it's Libra and Aries. All right. So the sun being in Aries, the moon being in Libra equals a full moon. But again, because Aries and Libra are where the north node and the south node are, also are. This is what makes it a lunar eclipse specifically that's happening here. So the star of the show is really what's happening in the Libra house of the chart, right? You have the south node and the moon that are both here, as well as the north node um, alongside the sun in the house that Aries is in. So the sun moon opposition, unlike when the sun and the moon are having positive aspects to each other, oppositions can really highlight a like friction that is happening between the two planets. So the sun and the moon are at opposite ends of each other. They're having a hard time communicating with each other. So what this means is like the ways that you may want to stretch to um, express externalize that energy to take action, right? It's going to be probably in conflict with how you want to, you know, express your innermost desires or what is truly going to bring you comfort or, um, yeah, like comfort. (laughs) Um, okay. And Libra being like a Venusian sign, a Venus ruled sign, it also rules over relationships and like the ways that we relate to each other. Whereas Aries is very much about the self. So there can be a conflict that naturally arises between like, who am I? How is this serving myself? And then also like, who am I within a collective, a community? And how is this, Um, whatever it is that I'm focusing on or working towards, how is this for the betterment of the community at large rather than just myself as an individual? And so this is also where we see a lot of friction happening. Um, The magic with like lunar eclipses is that they affect all of us, but they also affect us all in unexpected ways. And so even if we look to a lunar eclipse chart, we can see what's happening. We can make predictions, but ultimately it's really going to depend on watching this unfold for the next six months. Um, so this is like the energy that you can really expect. Another thing I want to point out with the chart for this lunar eclipse is that we also have Jupiter sextile Venus and Saturn. So again, like Saturn, Mm, brings a sense of like restriction and coldness to all of the areas that it's touching. But because um, there's going to be that sextile happening between Jupiter and Saturn um, and Venus and Saturn, right? We're going to have like more positive encouragement, more positive communications in the ways that we express and expand ourselves within these themes, particularly around community justice, um, Venusian themes, right? And then that's 
very much emphasized, especially with the sextile that's happening between Saturn and Venus. But then between Saturn and Jupiter, there's a natural expansion of wanting to put a focus on these themes as well. So I really wouldn't be surprised to see any kind of like major news unfolding this day, um, particularly around how we relate to each other, like um, how we connect with other people. This is going to be an expansion of letting go of like, this only serves me as an individual. And again, like really pushing you and encouraging you to work towards how and how is what I'm doing for the betterment of the collective good. And as a business owner, like this is a really powerful lesson to really lean into and to really sit with over the next six months, because perhaps the ways that you're building community and creating community within your offers can be expanded upon. Now on April 1st, there is a transit that I'm personally looking forward to, but I know a lot of people aren't, and that is the beginning of Mercury retrograde. So Mercury retrograde is nothing to fear. It's a natural like progression of the way that a planet moves forward. Retrogrades happen when a planet is, instead of moving forwards, it moves backwards, okay? And for Mercury specifically, Mercury retrogrades happen multiple times a year, like three or four times a year. And so they're not really anything to like be surprised about. You can totally plan ahead. And in particular for being a business owner, like you can use Mercury Retrograde to your advantage if you know what to expect. So April 1st is when Mercury Retrograde is officially starting. The pre-shadow period is already beginning on March 18th. So about two weeks prior. So the pre-shadow period is just a a length of time when you can expect Mercury retrograde themes to begin to pop up, but they don't really like officially kick off until April 1st. So you can still expect a lot of what's happening with Mercury retrograde to begin happening realistically around March 18th. And then there's also going to be a post shadow period as well. So after Mercury retrograde, itself is over. There's going to be two weeks after that at the end of the month going into May where you're still going to be feeling the effects of Mercury retrograde. So there's a lot happening. The start of the show of this transit is, of course, Mercury, but there aren't really a lot of direct transits that are happening that are involving Mercury itself. Some things I want to highlight. The sun is squaring the moon, so there's going to be a natural tension between the themes of the sun and the moon, um, which in this chart on this day, the moon um, at 6.14 p.m. is when the Mercury retrograde is going to go direct on April 1st, and that's in EST as well. So on this day, right, when Mercury retrograde goes direct, the moon is actually going to be in Sagittarius. So even though uh, there's going to be a like synastry between the sun and the moon with them both being in fire signs with them being squared off the ways that they communicate there's going to be a little bit of tension there so that's not too great there's also going to be a sextile that's happening between the moon and mars and so this is really interesting so mars is like the motivator, right? It's the war strategist. It's the planet that rules over like how we do things and how we are motivated to take action. So with it sextiling the moon, like there's this really supportive energy around taking action on the things that bring us like individual comfort on leaning into our intuition, right? Possibly around issues around um, or pertaining to women or femme people since the moon rules over that. But ultimately this is like our internal desires, right? So there's really supportive energy around like bringing that forward, perhaps making space within your marketing around like, you know, taking action, creating a lot of really powerful like why statements, sharing your story perhaps to your audience. Um, there's also going to be a trine that's happening between the moon and Jupiter, even though it's a Mercury retrograde. I'm just, <laughs> it's just clicking to me like how many of the transits during this day really like are centered around the moon itself. Um, luminary power right there. So again, we have moon trine Jupiter. So Again, that expansive energy, that 
like guru energy, really leaning into sharing what it is that you're learning and using it for the betterment of other people, which can connect to your why, can connect to why you got into business in the first place, what motivates you, what drives you, Mars, again, to continue doing what it is that you're doing, right? And what ultimately like helps you to stand apart, really leaning into being that one of one, being that coach, that consultant, that service provider, right? And being like, the option that your people should be working with. And then we also have the moon sextile Saturn. So in terms of like business astrology, Saturn's a great planet to be working with. And with there being such a positive aspect happening between the moon and Saturn, right? This is also a really good time to perhaps reevaluate, like review. Saturn really enjoys those activities. And those are ultimately like the themes of Mercury retrograde. So if you can spend time rather than initiating new things, but instead creating space to take note of what you have already done and to reevaluate if it is actually pushing you forward and leaning you towards your goals, that is going to be really in alignment and utilize this transit for your betterment, for your greater good. And then to round this out, we also have Saturn conjunct Mars. So this is an interesting, um, conjunction that's happening. Conjunctions are when two planets are really close together. And so we have both Mars and Saturn that are closely working together. They're in cahoots with each other. And again, that motivation, that drive to reevaluate and to take action in the reassessing energy rather than the initiation of something new is really going to serve you as a business owner. So I have a full podcast episode all about how to use Mercury Retrograde as a business owner. So definitely make sure that you check that out because that'll give you even more insight on how you can use this transit as well as the future Mercury Retrogrades that we will have this year and moving forward. So on April 5th, we have a really exciting transit. Venus is moving out of Pisces into Aries. So happy Venus return for folks that have Venus and Aries naturally in their chart like I do. This is really interesting because Venus, again, loves being in Pisces. It loves being in Taurus and Libra. These are the home planets, the home signs for this planet. However, It doesn't love being in Aries. There's a little bit of friction here that's going on. And so the chart of the day when it goes direct, which ironically happens at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, when Venus officially moves into Aries, um, this is going to bring a little bit of conflict to the ways that you perhaps connect with the themes of Venus. So beauty, love, how you perceive yourself, how you adorn yourself, right? Um, And also from a business astrology perspective, this also touches on um, like magnetism and attraction. So in particularly, I would connect that to marketing, right? Again, remember, we are still in Venus retrograde here. So the effects of that um, also may influence the way that you relate to this transit as well. So just keep that in mind. So what are some of the superstar like aspects I want to talk about on this transit in particular? First, we have Mercury sextile the moon. Okay, so this is interesting. This is like a supportive aspect, supportive communication um, between Mercury and the moon. So Again, there's Mercury retrograde itself is not like a negative thing, especially if you already have Mercury retrograde in your birth chart, in your natal chart. Um, This can be like a time where you don't feel like that typical Mercury retrograde feeling of like being confused, feeling like lost underwater. There may be some like clarity that you have. And this is really emphasized by the Mercury sextile moon aspect that's going on on this day as well. So with Mercury, right, it rules over commerce. It's like money, (laughs) but it's also the way that we communicate, how we share ideas. Um, And it does really best when it's in signs that are fluid, when it's in um, signs that can support that desire to free flow and to share ideas. So with it sextile the moon, right, there may be this desire to unearth like 
to go deeper to unearth what's like lingering below the surface. And so this may be a really good time to lean into that, but like taking Mercury retrograde into consideration, like what are some ways that you can bring that energy into your business by speaking on or doing a better job of centering your own story. So this could be a really good time to like reshare your story in different ways, literally how you got started, why you started your business, um, why your audience should care, right? And digging below the surface, getting deeper and going into more detail, perhaps with a story that you've already shared with your audience. Because again, maybe they need to hear it again. Maybe they need to hear it in a different way. Who knows, right? Um, this is a really good aspect to work with in terms of that. There's also Mars conjunct Saturn. So again, Mars and Saturn are still in cahoots with each other. They're still, they're still um, cozying up with each other. And so there may be like a lot of energy around how that can connect with storytelling, with marketing, with community building for you as well. That motivation to, again, really deep dive to make better data-based decisions in your business and ultimately to work with um, the energy of like taking action, but making sure that you're utilizing your resources to reevaluate, to make sure that you're on the right path and not just constantly moving forward all the time. And then the last thing I want to note here is that we also have Jupiter squaring the moon. So this is, you know, a conflict between the ways that you want to expand and also what is going to like personally nurture you individually. Um, there's going to be some conflict there. So again, really choose your battles. Keeping in mind, Mercury retrograde is still influencing a lot of these things. And this can also be like the ways that you want to expand personally. This could be like some frustration around feeling restricted um, in the areas where there's oppositions happening. There's natural friction of where Saturn is touching for you. So I would definitely check those areas of your chart, especially that have Pisces touching what house Pisces rules for you based on your rising sign. Check on that. Really make sure that you're bringing some care into that. And then just like being gentle with yourself. Again, this is a transit that's going to be happening for a while, but on a day that it goes direct, there's going to be a little bit of friction to offset some of the like support. So it's going to benefit you to go inward and to not push so much for like outward change with this. And now the last major transit I want to talk about for Aries season is happening on April 8th. This is the new moon in Aries um, and the solar eclipse in Aries. So this is going direct at 2.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this is really, really cool. <laughs> I always love it when I see a concentration of energy in a natal chart because it makes it like for better or worse, it makes it easier to know what to expect. So we have a lot of energy that's going on here at the top of the chart, the tippy top happening with um, Aries and Taurus. So those are going to be like the main character areas of the chart, right? And the major transit that I really want to talk about is the sun just being conjunct so many major players. So the sun's going to be conjunct the moon. That's what makes a new moon, right? When the sun and the moon are both present in the same sign. So here we have the sun and the moon both sitting in Aries, but we also have Mercury in Aries and we have the North Node there. So all of this is making like a super conjunction in the sign of Aries. So what does this mean? First of all, whenever we have like a concentration of energy, there's an amplification of these themes. So Aries, again, cardinal fire, it rules over like the individual being independent, being a self-starter. So these are areas that you may find yourself being drawn to. Um, with it being a, a cardinal sign in particular, right, there's this really interesting energy to start. But again, we're still in Mercury retrograde at this point. So you want to keep that in mind that this is not necessarily the time to start anything new. If anything, you can perhaps start like smaller projects of reviewing and reassessing, but I wouldn't necessarily be initiating anything moving forward, especially because um, 
on top of Mercury retrograde, we are still actively in the eclipse energy. This is the second um, pairing to that lunar eclipse that happened earlier in Aries season. So this is like the complementing, the sibling eclipse to that because eclipses always happen in pairs. So the sun being conjunct the moon is next to its amplifying, it's bringing attention to areas that the moon, Mercury, and the north node are all like ruling over. And with it all being in Aries, it's bringing this energy of like, I want to start, I want to initiate, I want to move forward with these themes, but it, it may not necessarily be feasible. So working with this energy, right, again, reevaluating, reassessing, and making a plan to use what it is that you have is going to be really like powerful for this energy and for this transit in particular, right? Um, there's also going to be really supportive energy and thinking about like the ways that you want to move forward because that North Node in particular, like it wants to expand. It wants you to move outside of the comfort zone of Libra, right? And where Libra um, rules in your chart. And so bringing it all together, bringing forward the themes of the moon, which relate to our innermost desires and our intuition, Mercury, which is like commerce and ideas and communication, and then the North Node, which is the expansion, the um, like bringing forward of outside of our comfort zone and releasing what is holding us back so that we can step into a different version of ourselves. All of that is being highlighted with the sun there and with that um, with that new moon energy. So there's going to be a real desire to think about this next cycle of your business, right? Um, especially because we'll also be in quarter two as well. So this may be a really good time to, again, assess what it is that you're doing in your business in order to prepare for this new quarter, this new season of your business. So those are the major transits that you can look forward to in Aries season. And if you want to dig deeper into this and you want to know specifically how these transits are going to affect your business and affect your personal chart, then definitely book a reading with me. All right. The links to that are going to be in the show notes as well as the comments below. So make sure you check that out. Um, Thank you so much for joining me in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.